Okay, so having wireless connectivity on your bike is a great little thing. You can see your gear position on your Garmin, see the battery level, all that kind of stuff. But what you can't do with the original system is communicate externally with anything. And Shimano have now addressed that by bringing out a new wireless unit, which is the EWWU101. They love a complicated name. And exactly the same shape and size as the old unit, which is the SMW11. And the new unit has Bluetooth capability. So this should be a simple case of uh, plug and play, just swap them over. But what you also need is the, um, the new battery as well, the new internal battery, which is the BTDN110. Exact same shape and size as the old one. Uh, it's just a lot more expensive. Uh, any excuse to raise the price, I guess, but it does have some kind of advanced circuitry in it to allow the Bluetooth thing to happen. So basically what we're gonna do is swap these over and we will then be able to control the whole system wirelessly to update the firmware, reassign, shift the buttons, the radio speeds, all that kind of stuff, just simply using an iPad or an iPhone or an Android. And um, so by the side of the road, you can, you can adjust stuff uh, sh straight away wirelessly with your phone, which is quite nice, especially if you're a Mac user like me, because Shimano never brought out a Mac version of their YouTube software. So you had to have a PC to do any kind of customization, which I haven't got, so I had to go around a friend's house and, and borrow his. So yeah, hopefully as long as this all works, this should be a boon in terms of ease of, of customization. Okay, so just to show how you disconnect the RY cable, DR2 cables, um, this is the special Shimano tool. It's not essential, but it does make it a little bit easier. And you just get this prong, put it around the groove like that, and give it a pull and it pops off. Okay, and to reconnect your DR2 cable, you just slot it into this channel like that, put it in, and a firm push until you hear that little click. And that's it. So to make this little unit fit inside a SRX tarmac at least, you just have to remove these little tabs here. And by doing that, it should then pop nicely inside like that. Okay, so the new battery is installed, the new D-Fly sender unit is installed. And what you then do is you go to your iPhone, because in fact uh, it is only iOS for the moment, Android is not supported, which is uh, a bit odd. Um, and you install the eTubes application, which is down here. And it starts up and it asks you for a Bluetooth connection. So what you do next is you go to your junction A and you press here uh, briefly for less than a second and you see those flashing lights come back down here. It's found the EW101 and it's going for the connection a little bit slow. And then what it usually does is it asks you if you are using splinter switches. No, no, it doesn't appear to be able to learn that I haven't got splinter switches. And then you basically have your updating firmware section. Mine is all up to date. And you can also customize uh, your switches. For example, your right shifter, you can reassign the buttons. Um, you can restore the default values because mine are actually inversed. I just like it like that. Um, you can uh, also specify uh, how fast you want your shifting, how many gears you can shift in one go, you know, lots of different things like that you can customize here. So there we go. And um, yeah, 
basically don't be afraid when you don't have any shifting on your bike uh, it's simply that you need to disconnect the Bluetooth via your phone and then uh, shifting will be restored on your bike now when I very first set this up I did have quite a few problems um, the eTube software immediately wanted to update both the new battery and the new D-Fly unit uh, it failed both times to do that which is kind of a bit freaky when uh, it's telling you that the unit could be defective uh, the firmware is not right it's going to rewrite the firmware um, it actually locked up the system as well whilst it was doing all this so there was nothing worked at all it wouldn't even take a charge so it wasn't the slickest procedure I've ever um, encountered in something like this but eventually retrying to get the different firmwares written over and I had to disconnect the battery and reconnect it to uh, unbrick the system uh, it did actually work all okay in the end um, but just be aware that that initial procedure could be problematic uh, I know someone else as well that um, has had the same the same issues but once it's done it's done and uh, you no longer need your PC to uh, to adjust or update your bike